A very warm welcome to you all this morning to Rothley Parish Church. It's great to have you with us, whether you're part of our regular worshipping congregation or from the wider community, or whether you're joining us from further afield. You're all very welcome indeed to this online service as we come together to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, an important festival in the church's year. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9, we read that while his followers were gathered round him, Jesus was taken up to heaven before their very eyes, and the cloud hid him from their sight. Today's service is one in which we'll celebrate Christ's ascension and explore what that means for us today. But let's start off our service with some words of acclamation. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has ascended on high. He reigns forever. Alleluia. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Alleluia. Our first hymn this morning is a reminder that we serve a risen and ascended Saviour, one who is alive today and with us moment by moment through the Holy Spirit. We sing, the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now, while Simon plays it for us. of quiet as we come to our time of confession. Seeing that we have a Saviour who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. We say together, Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, risen and ascended for us. We have not loved you as our Redeemer, nor obeyed you as our Lord. We have not brought our prayers to you, nor heeded your tears shed over the world. 
Forgive us, we pray. Breathe into us a new spirit of service and make us joyfully obedient to your will. For your glory's sake. Amen. The Collect for today. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place our Saviour Christ has gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we say together the version of the Creed on the order of service. We believe in Christ, the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. He became man to set us free and did not despise the virgin's womb. He overcame death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at God's right hand in glory and will come to be our judge. Amen. And now Thoroth Klein is going to read today's Bible reading from Acts chapter 1. Our Bible reading today is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many thanks, Toralf. My guess is that many of you online this morning have visited Coventry Cathedral, and if you have, you'll have come face to face 
with the artist Graham Sutherland's vast tapestry, which, ha which hangs behind the large communion table. Whether or not you actually like it as a work of art, you can't fail to be impressed by the striking design and the rich colours. What's its title? Christ in Glory. And the risen and ascended Christ is the focus of our next song. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. And we're going to sing this together now, after, after which Rob speaks to us under the title, Stay at Home, Save Lives. The Lamb is on the throne, so let's come and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you raised and exalted our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb on the throne, to your right hand on high. And so we can come before you now with our prayers and ask that you would speak to us through your word, for Jesus' sake. Amen. At the end of last week, I received a formal letter extending the period of my shielding uh, up to the 30th of June. Uh, to be honest, it was a bit fed up, uh, frustrated. And that's an emotion that I've heard increasingly expressed among us during this time of waiting, staying at home, not able to do the things we wanted and planned, wanting to get on with life. Yet at the same time, nervous about what a release from lockdown might actually mean. The book of Acts begins with a situation that begins with some similarities to what we face today. Jesus gave this command to his disciples in verse 4. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. And so we find them returning from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem and heading upstairs to the room where they were staying to wait. They had no idea how long this period of waiting would last nor what the new normal would be when they were released, and what that would look like. Might they also have experienced frustration, impatience, apprehension, cut off from family and friends back in Galilee? How are they sustained through that period of waiting? And though of course our situation is very different in many ways, what, what might we learn from them? And we learn firstly that the king is at home and is active. Jesus is not in intensive care, helpless, dependent on others, nor is he in endless meetings with advisors crunching through data, probabilities and uncertainties. Our Lord Jesus Christ is ascended to heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father, all wise, all knowing, all powerful, ruling over heaven and earth. Yet at the same time, as we've seen in recent weeks in Romans chapter 8, he is all loving, interceding for us, at work to bring us to glory as adopted children with him. Nothing in the whole of this current situation 
falls outside his sovereignty and we know we can trust him. So they have that assurance that uh, Jesus is in charge. And secondly, that they have God's word of promise in verses 4 to 5. The disciples were sustained by the spoken promise of God. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. In their context, that referred specifically to the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise that was made to all who repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Now today, as Christians, living after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we've already received that gift from the Father, the gift of God himself to dwell with us, to draw us to Christ, to transform us into his likeness, and to equip us as his church, his body here on earth. We have the Holy Spirit, but we also have what Peter refers to in 2 Peter as his very great and precious promises. There are just so many promises that our Lord spoke for believers, now written down for us in the scriptures. Can I encourage you to read and to meditate on the promises of God? Because as St Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Let's use this time to read and chew over the promises of God in the scriptures. And furthermore, they had access to the Father in verse 14. Knowing that Jesus is ascended and that he will keep his promise, we read that the disciples, together with the women and Jesus' mother Mary and Jesus' brothers, were all joined together constantly in prayer. With one accord, they were devoted to prayer. And it makes me wonder if you, right now, could have a one-to-one -one with the Prime Minister about the lockdown, this period of waiting, your hopes, your fears, your frustrations. What might you say? Well, the good news is that right now, where you are, you can have that conversation, but with the one who is truly in charge, our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he is sovereign over all things and looking for his promises to be fulfilled. And even if you can't find the words, as we saw a couple of weeks ago in Romans 8 verse 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. Well, we've seen the, um, the refrain from the government about stay at home or stay at now as it is, stay alert and save lives. Well, that's kind of what we have here in Acts in verse 8, save lives. When the disciples were released at Pentecost, they would go out with Jesus' commission. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. A commission that through their witness, Jesus would save lives, would be adding to their number those who are being saved. And we inherit that mission. And we don't have to wait until the end of lockdown. We are recruited as believers to bring Christ to the world by our witness that lives may be saved this day, even this day, through what we say and do. God is at work to save lives. The words you use today, the things you do, will be a witness to those around you. Let us pray that in this time, our, our witness, we, in our witness, we will be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ before a watching world. And I want to conclude with some words I read earlier this week uh, from Jim Packer, an English theologian, a very well-known book called Knowing God. He writes, Wait for the Lord is a constant refrain in the Psalms. And it is a necessary word because God often keeps us waiting. He is not in such a hurry as we are. And it is not his way to give more light on the future than we need for action in the present. 
So I leave you once again with those concluding words of Psalm 27. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, we do indeed wait on you. And with our frustrations, our fears, our apprehensions and our hopes about the future, um, we bring those to you, knowing that you intercede for us by your Spirit. We thank you that you are in heaven, in charge, and that we have your very great and precious promises in the Scriptures to sustain us. We pray that this week, um, both through the ups and downs, of our experience of the lockdown. We may constantly turn to you in confidence and entrust our lives to you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Many thanks, Rob. And now we come to our prayers of intercession, led this morning by Ros Taylor. A prayer for Ascension Day. Almighty God, today we are reminded of your greatness and glory, your sovereign power and eternal purpose, all expressed so wonderfully in Jesus Christ our Lord, risen and ascended. We thank you for the wonder of Ascension, that marvellous yet mysterious moment in the life of the disciples, which left them gazing heavenwards in confusion yet departing in joy. We thank you that through his departing, Jesus prepared for his coming again through his Spirit, his Church, and his coming again in glory. Father God, like the disciples, we too will never fully understand all ascension means. We accept, but we do not fully understand. We believe, yet we have many questions. Help us, despite our uncertainty, to hold firm to the great truth that the wonder of Christ Jesus goes far beyond anything we can ever imagine. And in that faith may we live each day to his glory and honour. Amen. When we pray for others, we pray for them in body, mind and spirit. And today I want us to focus on our minds as we come to the end of Mental Health Awareness Week. The theme this year has been kindness. Almighty God, we want to thank you for the many acts of kindness which have been shown throughout the country and in our own community to support lonely and vulnerable people at this really difficult time. Lord, you have set the standard of kindness for us in giving us your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Prompt us and direct us in how we can help others, and may each act of kindness that we do point others to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for those we know who have a mental health condition, which means that they normally find life difficult. In these times of isolation and anxiety, may they get the support they need to enable them to cope, and help each of us to take extra steps to keep in touch with those who struggle with their mental health. We also pray for those who've been bereaved recently and are suffering the double blow of being unable to grieve with family and friends. Draw near to these people, Lord, and comfort them in their loss and loneliness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for children and adults with a learning disability. The lockdown will have put added pressures on these people and we pray for strength and perseverance for them and for their carers. We pray that schools, council services and charities who provide much needed support will be able to get back to their normal provision as quickly as possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for the mental health of young people for school children unable to see friends and uncertain about their studies, for young people whose future chances have been thrown into doubt, for those who have difficult family relationships, for those who are disadvantaged and at risk. 
We pray for those working in education, social care and mental health services, that you will help them reach children and young people who need their help. We pray for school leaders, teachers and other staff as decisions are made about reopening schools. Give them wisdom and courage to make the right decisions for their pupils and staff. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, you know us inside out. With other people, we can pretend that we're okay and that we're coping fine, but you know what's really going on in our heads. You understand how we feel each day. You see through the layers of politeness and pretends that we so often wear to disguise our true feelings. At this time of uncertainty and fear, help us to come to you first, to share with you our true feelings and to keep our eyes focused on you, our rock and refuge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's end our prayers by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Roz. I rather like the quote from American theologian Tim Keller, who says this, The ascension of Jesus Christ takes what Jesus was and did on earth and releases it into the universe and into our lives with all its healing power. We serve a risen and ascended Saviour who, as our final hymn, Consider Christ, reminds us, is a source of our salvation. We sing this hymn together.
Thanks to everyone who's been involved in putting together today's service. And thank you all for joining us in today's act of worship. It's been great having you with us. There are details both in today's fellowship post and on the church website about tonight's Praying for Leicestershire online event, which begins at 7pm. Please give this priority. It's a wonderful opportunity to pray for both our city and our county, with hundreds of other people, including the Bishop of Leicester, Martin Snow. So that's seven o'clock tonight. Please join us. And as you have coffee at home after this service, you might want to consider telephoning or texting someone from the church contact list, simply to check that all is well with them. As we all continue to face up to the challenges and uncertainties associated with this coronavirus pandemic. A closing prayer. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death, resurrection and ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Keep us close to Christ and help us, Heavenly Father, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, to humble ourselves, to pray and seek your face, and to turn to you. May we trust in your love, obey your word, serve your purpose, and praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.